How did Toronto end up with such shit subway signage? By signage, I mean wayfinding, a combination of visual indicators that guide you to the place that you need to go when you're down in the hole. Unbelievable. Oh, for fuck, that's so bad. It's often missed in transit talk for two key reasons. The sort of people that are into transit are there for the subways, not the signs. But the signs are in the subways. Shut up. The second thing, people who think and talk about transit systems, like this Canadian cherub, hey. <laughs> know the international conventions and patterns that make even a completely new system easy to understand. Imagine that you haven't used transit before, neither a fan or familiar with how it works. Everything from the logos and designs of different services to express trains to knowing how a platform splits with each side going the opposite direction. We take it for granted if you've lived in a big city, but this stuff isn't obvious to someone descending the stairs for their first subway ride. Coming from a country that has crap transit, I get to revisit all versions of this with visitors. I was talking with Thea from Urban Caffeine, who is the other video maker I know with a design background and a stack of transit videos, and she made this point. It's extra frustrating because the information you need in transit is real. You need it right now. You need to digest it quickly. You don't have time to ponder about it. And what happens when people visit the largest city in a country and get lost because the wayfinding is bad? There's a lot of loss to it because there are people that visit and they're so intimidated. They just open the map. It's like, whoa, I am not going to try that. <laughs> and then they just call an Uber. If they had a good experience with public transit, then they become advocates in their hometown for better public transit because they know what it's like to have good transportation. If a city can't get it right and be a model and be an inspiration, then how can other cities say, hey, look at New York, look at Toronto, look at Montreal. We can be that when they themselves, they go there and they're so confused. All transit systems every day create a first and lasting impression for people. The bad experience of being lost shaves some percent of ridership from your systems. But yeah, it also impacts systems everywhere. Wayfinding is also just a thing you cannot get around, like releasing videos on transit you lined up months ago even though you just want to talk about futons and antitrust reform. GPS doesn't work underground. In fact, neither does data in Toronto until recently when Rogers used a spade of stabbings to bleed out the Canadian consumer by absolving another competitor. Good job, Canadian oligarchs. That's what I'm talking about. So I asked Reese Martin from the YouTube channel RM Transit and recently RM Guns where he talks about transit and what he'll do to train guys if they shop at his house. Thanks for watching. Reese gave me the challenge of going from Harbour Front in Toronto to Richmond Hill Centre. After getting on the streetcar, the very first problem is dealing with the TTC's Line 1, Yellow Line, Young University or sometimes just University or just Young. Young Line, University Line. Is this the university line, young line, and streetcars? This was originally called the Young Street Subway. It went on Young Street, so that's what I got called. Fair enough. But then it was extended, and that is where some ball bag who couldn't think ahead made the wrong call and called it Young University. The locals know university means this or something. Is that what it is? Well, you can, you can figure it out if you figure out what street the subway runs under. Cross-reference with the street map here, so you can figure it out. I mean, I have no idea. These are different, these aren't even, they're not even the same colors. They're all, everything's red. When they did the next series of extensions, they realized that the naming convention was ridiculous. They didn't call it the Young Front Queens Park Blospadina Vis Park Ever Den Allen Shepherd Keel Under University Jane Street. But they also didn't immediately reverse course, so now, still in the local lingo and on the signs, is this legacy of confusion from the 1970s as lines go by colors, numbers, and all of these nouns. That carries through to the projects. When they extended the Young University line, they called it the Toronto York Spadina subway extension. Extension of what? Surely the most interesting thing about an extension is what it extends. The city has become a noun nightmare. The same words repeat again and again. King, Queen, Dundas, Young, Spadina, Blore. As a one day old white guy, I don't want to bash old white guys too hard. I'm undermining my chances of one day having an air vent named after my legacy of being a blowhard. But from a wayfinding perspective, some cancel culture would probably be good for this town. 
there's a desperate need for a fresh set of names for things. You can be going from Shepherd Young in North York on the Young University line to Bloor Young to transfer to the Bloor Danforth to go to Dundas West before realizing your friend said Dundas and then hopping back on the Bloor Danforth back to Bloor Young, which when you come from this direction is actually called Young, and finally transferring back onto Young University to Dundas. Maybe with all these duplicate names, the designers of the system are simply inbred and can't comprehend how confusing it is. Maybe it's time for Tommy Young Blore Dundas, who works at TTC Wayfinding and bleeds to death from a paper cut, to come up with some new names. And no, Tommy, don't call this one Tim Hortons, and this one Hortons Timothy, and this one Double Hortons, and this one Double Double. On the way to Richmond Hill Center, we went to a subway station. There are three Tim Hortons in this station. <laughs> one down there. Wow. There's one over here. Wow. Was there another cafe or a fast food outlet? No, it was only Tim Hortons. You couldn't even navigate based on amenities. Everything was simultaneously next to and far away from a Tim Hortons. It somehow captures a frustrating dopey element to the culture here, not considering what could exist and trudging down into tasteless mediocrity every day. Keeping the same legacy subway lines and renting all three of your subway spaces to the same company both strike me as a painfully rudderless culture at work, a drift and a stagnancy. I'm sure lots of commuters like the same old names and the same old coffee, but giving them what they want isn't leadership or vision. Maybe a third of them would like even just a different multinational corporation that sells coffee. So back to our journey, when you walk in, there's a map which says Finch is the terminus on the yellow line, which is the direction that I want to go. But when you look at the sign over the platform, it says University Line, Young Line, and Streetcars. None of the names on this match up with the words on the sign. This is genuine confusion on my face. How would you know? But adding to the line one yellow university young confusion, the line has a different name depending on which direction it is going. To explain this weirdness, this is Boulevard René Lévesque in Montreal. On planet TTC, this side of a road going west would be called René, and this going east would be called Lévesque. And pulling apart Quebec's national hero like that is unacceptable. This should say towards Finch. This should say towards Vaughan. Well, actually, towards Vaughan Metropolitan Centre. For developer bullying city reasons, this station is stuck with a monster 25-character name. When you look at the sign beside the stairs, which is what you have to do because the sign above the stairs is totally useless, you'll notice that it's just called Vaughn, probably because the name is too long. Probably time to shorten the name. Will someone sack up and shorten the name? Probably not, because great-grandfather Dundas married great-grandmother Finch, and then cousin Dundas married a Bloor who was half Dundas and Bloor, and that person obviously went to work in wayfinding at the TTC, because that is the only reason that I'll accept the incompetence that would result in yet another terrible loose end naming scheme carrying on year after year. Yeah, of course the map says that it is northbound. It's north. But no shit, the entire thing is northbound. Then if you said southbound, it would also confuse. So just don't say it. It's useless. It's a useless word that doesn't mean anything. It might as well say, you're in a train, dickhead. The maps are covered in this sort of redundant information. The trolleys are on the map, but there's no stops, just a nice old geographically inaccurate line with no details on it. Many of them are less used lines than buses, and not all of them run all the time. So they're just on the map, like, we also have trolleys. Oh my god, you have trolleys? Wow! I guess that's a cultural highlight to a transit agency that puts three Tim Hortons in one subway station. And every trolley terminus is called a loop. More redundant text, every single line, where some dundas added their senseless seasoning to the map soup. Well, actually, that's what we call the terminus part of the track. Congratulations, pedant. Here is your worst map for the 99% who aren't transit nerds. The key says streetcar routes and then lists all the numbers of the streetcars that are down here in the map. Like, hey, see if you can find your streetcar route down in the map. Imagine if a country listed all the cities as being a thing with a dot shape, but then also listed all the names of the cities that you're going to find on a map down below, and then I guess also called them a city every time. How many cousins do you have to fuck to make this map? But this stuff isn't even the bad part. 
The interconnections are where you get to see two morons meet in a parking lot. We continued north to Finch Station. It is your third Tim Hortons. And then I had to connect to... Buses? Connect to... Okay, well, I don't see it. There's a huge problem in Toronto with any single transit agency not wanting to lift a finger to help people connect to other agencies and get around this massive city. The GO stuff's over there. So when you have a sign saying buses, what they really mean is TTC buses. It's so Bush League, still operating like Fort York and not Canada's largest city. Well, our buses are here. I don't know what's going on with other buses that are different colors that go to places that aren't our places. That's not our job. This is the more international problem, the sort of thing that you see in lots of cities. Higher levels of government come in and spend billions of dollars on the transit agencies of this city and that city, but those transit agencies can be so petty with each other, undermining the success of a region's transit system. This is where I'm going to have to do the old, Montreal's pretty good at this, which Canadians love. The fact that the Montreal system, even though it's in a different language, is still easier to navigate, really pulls the pants down on how bad things are in Toronto. First of all, the equivalent of the TTC is the STM, and it is day and night when it comes to design. You'll know the color of a line because the door above the stations indicates it in a circle, a circle motif that you see throughout, the circle that is the shape of a tunnel, the circle that is the shape of a logo, even visible on their COVID brochures that they mailed out, with the corners like the bus windows. It's just a beautiful vision of design. It's the sort of thing which you only really notice if you're a design nerd. The people involved in this have worked at the agency for decades, and there's just a sense of pride in their work. They're good at it. Literally, the stations from the 1970s look like the signs, which look like this vent. This was built last year. It's a fucking air vent. But can you believe how beautiful this fucking air vent is? I want this vent to be named after me. Like Toronto, Montreal has a regional agency called the ARTM that is responsible for coordinating the regional transportation needs of Montreal, and they've created a unified design and wayfinding standard. When they needed to do that, they turned to the STM and used their skill set and in-house knowledge to build the overall system's design. When the ARTM came up with a design standard and gave it to the STM, well, it was immediately accepted because, I mean, it was basically the STM's design. But in Toronto, Jesus, so you would think, well, I guess Metrolinx just need to create that standard. But they have. The problem is, unlike Montreal, they didn't have the STM to turn to. They had the TTC, and the TTC suck at this stuff. They are the overseers of this visionless mess that they haven't cleaned up. When Metrolinx came up with a design standard, which is pretty good, they had to do it themselves. And when they gave it to the TTC, the TTC told them where to shove it, which was probably very confusing because the TTC have four different names for our soul, and one of them is Vagina South. The solution in this situation is the empowerment of the regional agency to enforce change if needed. The softer step before merging agencies, which will often happen eventually, is to at least merge the ticketing and signage and create a seamless experience for riders that doesn't require the learned experience of mistakes. You can even see in Montreal the places that fall outside the control of the ARTM, like the underground city, where there is a significant drop-off in wayfinding quality. Although the design and transit-obsessed vigilantes of Montreal have taken it upon themselves to fill those gaps. It took Friesen about an hour to whip up his design. This is the sort of issue that you see in a lot of places. Squabbling, prideful entities in a system that ultimately puts individual egos ahead of the collective. And then higher levels of government not calling them on their bullshit and stepping in to straighten things out. It's really a lack of leadership that is to blame. There will be plenty of people in Toronto who defend the Bush League bullshit system that exists because most people like the thing they're used to. But it's for potential users that leadership should be prioritizing because that is the loss of doing wayfinding wrong in a transit system. Billions of dollars spent on massive transit projects only to mess it up by erecting bad signage. And bad signage in a transit system does say one thing clearly to many new users. You should have driven a car. Ah, there it is. Yeah, it is that direction. If we were in a hurry right now, this would be extremely stressful. I want to be named after this vent. 
I don't want to be named after this vent. I'd just be called Vent Saunders. I want this vent to be named after me. When I was here last time, the, they had this team of people being assigned, a human assigned. They were pointing people where to go, which is like, how expensive a solution is that?